In today's episode, I spoke with Corey Quinn about vertical marketing, go-to-market strategy, and fractional CMO work. Corey is a fractional CMO and GTM strategist who works with agencies to verticalize their business and audience, and he's uniquely qualified to teach us today. So let's dive right into the episode. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate the heads up. Cool. Um, well, let's let's start on the vertical GTM side and, and sure. start basics because mm -hmm. there are going to be a lot of people listening to this that, yeah, okay, they kind of understand what that means at a high level. But really, when sure. when somebody like you does this for a living, how mm. would you define vertical go-to-market, what that really means, what you help people do? Sure. So I think, so my, my target audience are primarily digital marketing agencies. And a very common way to start an agency is by kind of just putting, you know, hanging a shingle out there and starting to do digital marketing for businesses, you know, calling your friends and family and whatnot. And that is a great way to start an agency. And I have no problem with that. But what happens over time as a generalist uh, agency where you're working with businesses of all shapes and sizes, you at a certain point, it becomes difficult to kind of scale some of the things that uh, I see happening in these agencies that are, let's say, getting to the uh, 500K plus level uh, in annual uh, uh, revenue. What happens is that sales become challenging to uh build at scale. In other words, it's dependent primarily on the founder and they're doing their networking. So it's hard to, it's hard to really scale that, number one. Number two is that you see uh, client churn go up because as an undifferentiated agency providing, let's say, you know, uh, PPC or SEO or uh, any kind of uh, very traditional marketing services, it's difficult to differentiate and really to hold on to clients. So you see a lot of the client churn. And then the third thing is uh, a lot of agencies struggle when it comes to being proactive about uh, innovating their service. Obviously, we're in the middle of a maybe a revolution when it comes to AI and chat GPT and generative uh, generative content, generative AI. And as a result of that, it's, it's, uh, it's changing the world. And so cer certain agencies, particularly ones who are more of a generalist agency, um, have a hard time really being proactive in innovating how they go to market and the services they provide given all these changes. And so what the, 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 an option to help with all of these things is to transition from being a generalist, sort of a, you know, one size fits all. We work with any, anybody and everybody uh, and anyone uh, to deciding to focus on a specific vertical market. That could be uh, anything from, let's say, dentists or attorneys or uh, manufacturing uh, companies or secondary education, you know, some type of vertical market, which allows the agency owner to go from sort of uh, doing a little bit of everything for everyone, which by the way, is challenging when it comes to things like uh, creating scale and, um, you know, things like uh, even like communication, everything has to be synchronous. It's all always, you know, a lot of hands-on work. When you transition to more of a, a vertical specialist, you're able to uh, simplify the things you do uh, the number of things you do, because you typically do a very similar service for a specific audience over and over, which allows you to do things like build systems and scale and so on and so forth. So that's really the, the thing that I'm super passionate about. I'm on a mission to help a thousand agencies to transition from a generalist to a specialist, because I've seen firsthand sort of the, the, the impact that specializing in this way can really have on the really the quality of the business and the life of the founder. So when, when, if you were advising, or, or let's say you're just like screening somebody that might become a good client, it's an yeah. agency that comes to you and says, we're looking at doing this. What, what would be the bullet points, you know, two, three bullet points you would give them yeah. to really say, this is why verticalizing your agency is going to make you more likely to succeed. Well, the first thing is it makes everything easier. You know who to target, which list to build and buy, which content to, to create, which podcasts to start. Uh, which podcast to, to guest on, which conferences to go to, all of those things become very, very easy and uh, simple versus if you're just sort of a generalist. So that's, that's number one. That's a, a big benefit. Um, if, the, uh, if the founder is the primary growth engine of the agency, meaning that all new sales have to kind of go through the founder, the founder is the primary salesperson and really the source of all the new business, um, that's a, that is a, um, that's an area that will become much better 
because you're able to systematize with uh, uh, with with verticalizing. And so, yeah, it's it's really just making things simple. It's it's creating scale in the business and uh, ultimately becoming um, more visible in the market because now you have a specialization, which is really important in this world, is to be specialized. And also, a really cool thing about taking a vertical approach is that there is uh, there's sort of a flywheel effect when you become really good at solving complex problems for a vertical market, there is a natural um, uh, sort of a networking effect that you get to tap into. When you work with 10, 20, 30, 40 businesses in this, in this vertical, they begin to spread the, the good word about your business organically. So you get this sort of this nice flywheel effect of, um, as a result of focusing in on a specific vertical market. So for you, yeah. Practicing what you preach, I'm curious mm -hmm. what what your kind of elevator pitch for your own offering is. So if you're going around telling people you need to verticalize, get more specific, well, yeah. what does yours look like? How do you personally define your target market for what you're doing? With your oh, business? it's so good. I've I've had to struggle. It's it's a struggle. Like I'm right there too because I'm solving effectively a horizontal problem. SaaS businesses also struggle with trying to target too many different types of buyers or too many different types of industries. Um, and so what I've come down to, and I do have to drink my own Kool-Aid to the extent that I have to you know, focus. So I've specialized in helping agencies who are doing greater than $500,000 in annual revenue to help them to um, go from this transition from a generalist to a specialist. They are struggling from the three things I mentioned, which is sales, retention, and innovation. Um, those, those are the primary sort of... Um, key indicators as it comes, as it relates to who would be a good fit for the services that I provide. And, and so if you were going through um, this process of kind of screening somebody, new client, mm -hmm. and they were kind of scared of what this might do to their business. So on the flip side, you know, I'd asked what will make them more likely to succeed? Well, if they're scared mm -hmm. and they're saying, I don't know if I should niche down. I don't know if yeah. I should get more specific. What would be your message to companies with that fear? Because I'm sure that's one of the more common ones you get. I think the biggest, yeah, the biggest uh, potential fear about specializing is in this, just the nature of deciding to um, reduce the total addressable market. That's typically a challenge when it comes to a founder because more is more, right? And the reality is, is that, um, uh, and uh, is that you are, you limit your ability to have a um, an outstanding impact if you are just a sort of a common, you solve a very common problem. And so um, the reality is that you can have an agency that focuses exclusively on plumbers, of which there are 150,000 plumbing businesses in the US. And if you only have a small percentage of the market, let's say one to 3%, you have a very healthy seven, sorry, eight figure digital marketing agency uh, that's also very, very profitable. So I think once, once you look at the actual numbers uh, and when you, um, when you look at the actual size of specific markets to, to potentially target and you look at the total revenue and, the, and the, how much money they could be making, um, it helps to uh, alleviate the, uh, the sometimes irrational concern that they may be uh, going too small. You, you touched on this a little bit before, but how do you market your own business? Like, how do you, how do you find mm -hmm. customers? Good question. So I am focusing on a lot of sort of organic reach for myself. So what I do very, very simply is I will go on LinkedIn on five days a week. I will uh, post about uh, the problems that I solve and, and talk about the specific uh, area that, that I'm interested in, which obviously is vertical specialization. Um, I also have a daily newsletter that I've been growing and been promoting to those agency owners who are interested in this topic and they want to understand you know, how to do it from themselves. I also have a, a weekly podcast where I bring in uh, successful agency owners who have gone through this transition from a generalist to a specialist and have been wildly successful. Um, and I'm also part of a couple of networking groups uh, that attract a lot of agency owners. So that's my primary focus today. I am writing a book. I will be publishing it uh, in October. And it's specifically about the five-step process that I take my one-on-one -on -one clients through, but making available to anyone who wants to read the book, they can do it themselves. And then soon I'll also be launching an accelerator uh, program, which is a small group environment where we'll also be going through the five steps and more of an experiential uh, program. 
So what are the five steps? Yeah, good question. Looking at my board right now, I should know these. I do know these. Number one, you have to choose a vertical market. And we take a qualitative and a quantitative approach. We look at your business. We see which clients stay with you the longest, are the easiest to close, uh, you know, generate the best revenue. We also look from a qualitative perspective. Who do you like working with? Who does your sales team like selling to? And who do your client success people like serving? And so we take a lot of that data, we put it together, and we uh, summarize uh, the business based on a vertical lens. And then we um, identify a short list of verticals and we go out and we validate that the size of the vertical market is worth pursuing. So once we take care of that, we've chosen a vertical market that, that the agency wants to pursue. Uh, next thing we do is we actually do uh, client interviews. I'm a big fan of really trying to understand the buying journey on the behalf of the client. So we'll go out and interview the clients to understand how and why they bought from this agency uh, so that we can look for patterns in those responses and begin to codify that into some new positioning and messaging. Then we'll do some competitive research to understand from a buyer's perspective, who are the competitors that they're going to be looking and comparing my agency to or my client's agency to. And so we take that information both from the client interviews as well as the, the competitive landscape. And then we do a, um, a positioning and messaging workshop when we're looking to find ways to differentiate in a way that is meaningful to the buyer. So we want to articulate our meaningful differences you know, in a way that helps us to stand out in the market. Once we've identified the positioning and messaging, then we build a, a six-month go-to-market strategy, specifically around inbound marketing, outbound sales and marketing, which I'm a huge fan of, as well as relationship-based marketing. So that's, that's effectively the five steps. I, I want to come back to the outbound side of this as well, because I know you've talked about that. But before, just on this string, it's important to consider every side of, of the coin, right? So if you're looking at somebody that might be thinking of joining you, um, but maybe they're not a good fit, what are those qualifications of somebody that, that should not consider verticalizing? I think going back to the, I would call them somewhat limiting beliefs around narrowing a market. Um, typically, my experience is that an agency owner will stick to the generalist approach for as long as they can. And um, if they're not ready to narrow their market, they don't, they don't intu intuitively know or believe yet that taking a vertical approach or narrowing their target audience is the right thing for them, I'm not going to be able to convince them. Uh, that's number one. Number two, a big factor to all of this is ultimately being able to have a very healthy lifetime value for your clients. That is an indicator that you're providing long-lasting and differentiated value over the long run. And if that is a challenge for an agency, it's difficult to really fix that uh, at, along the way as we're trying to verticalize. You really have to have um, some, some great evidence that uh, your clients are getting a lot of value from you and that they stick with you for the long run. If they don't have a good lifetime value, they're probably not a good fit for me. Makes sense. So, so outbound, inbound. I know you've written before how most companies just kind of rely on inbound and they're like, that's going to yeah. be our saving grace. and. Mm -hmm. not, not as willing or even think about doing outbound as much. I, I just want to know how you would approach that. Like what kind of activities, outbound activities are meaningful for agencies yeah. sp specifically? Sure. So outbound is one of those things where um, it makes a lot of sense if you are a, an agency founder who wants to grow beyond what inbound is creating, right? And so inbound networking and and uh, those type of things are typically where a lot of agencies start. It's, it's the right place to start. But once you have that established, you cannot really sort of turn up and down the volume of inbounds. There's really only so much control you have over that. So um, it's for those agency owners who want to sort of accelerate scale, sales and, and kind of streamline and, and scale the business in that way. And so the, the, there's, there's a few things that agencies have to do really well. Number one is verticalizing, having a vertical focus. Like I said earlier, it simplifies sort of the outbound process. You can have a lot of clarity around who specifically do you want to target, uh, which vertical. Um, and uh, within that, you can also identify those businesses much more easily that are probably having the problem that you can solve for them and that they can afford your services. So having a really great list is extremely important. It's not something you just go by and uh, load up to your, uh, your email um, system to, to, to blast out cold emails. Uh, it's more about really trying to, to, to narrow the list to those businesses 
that again have uh, have the need, have the need for the service that you provide, uh, and also can afford your services. So once you've once you've got the list, the next thing that I'm a big fan of after you've done the positioning messaging is doing something that that uh, uh, I call gift marketing and is a first touch, not as a thank you for a meeting or you know a follow up. It's actually a first touch strategy where you will send a thoughtful, meaningful, uh, potentially uh, uniquely striking uh, gift to the high value prospects that you uh, that you want to build a relationship with. It's kind of like what you see in SaaS and ABM, um, but it's at the it's at the uh, the agency level, and so. If you have a great list, you know who your buyers are, you, you, you have a high level of confidence that they can afford you and have, your, uh, have a need that you can solve. I recommend going out and sending them. You know, I've sent everything from uh, cookies to Mont Blanc pens to flowers, you name it, and a lot of this stuff. And what that does is it transforms the dynamic of the, uh, of the uh, potential relationship from one of being very cold and resistant to being open. Um, I'll give you an example. Just... Uh, the uh, at my, my the last company I was at, we would uh, we targeted attorneys, and attorneys is a very um, attractive market for uh, agencies to to go after. And the typical way that agencies would would reach out to them is through LinkedIn and through email and cold calls. And the the, the law firms would get really good at blocking that sort of that that uh, that effort, and and uh, they'd use gatekeepers and whatnot. Well, what we did is we did something a little different, which we would send them a. a, a a tin of gourmet cookies, like amazing, like delicious cookies that are like, wow, these are truly remarkable. We'd send them to the office and inevitably they would be in an overnight package, get opened up by the office manager or the attorney. And of course, they would inevitably end up in the break room and everyone in the law firm is enjoying these cookies and saying, where did these come from? And they, oh, they came from this company called Scorpion. It's the last company I was with. And um, as a result of that, a sales team member assigned to that, that law firm to reach out, we'd call them and, and, and instead of getting the typical resistance, it would be along the lines of, oh, hey, Blake, um, oh, you're from Scorpion? Oh, hold on. The attorney wants to talk to you. By the way, thank you for the cookies. Right? It changes that whole dynamic, right? And so um, I've done this at scale and I, I coach my clients to do the same as a way to improve the probability that you'll have a high quality uh, sales conversation with a, um, with a great sales lead. So I'm a big fan of that uh, that as a uh, a way to kind of accelerate the sales process when it comes to outbound. Let's take a sharp turn here to end things off. A few more minutes here, a couple more questions. Sure. I, I do want to I want to dive into the fractional work that you've done since you yeah. have left Scorpion for the past couple of years. Now you've been doing fractional mm -hmm. CMO work and helping companies with vertical GTM. Yeah. Um, why focus on agencies? Why did, how did you land on that? What was the process? For, I'm sure that it sure. started more general and like ended mm -hmm. up, you ended up doing that, this exercise for yourself. But what did yeah. that look like? So it made sense primarily because I have about 15 years experience in the agency space, both as a sales guy and as, as a manager, a leader, and eventually the chief marketing officer for a, a, a successful agency. And so it made sense for me to focus on this area, not only because I have a lot of direct experience, but I also have some credibility. I could talk about uh, the fact that, hey, I helped Scorpion grow from 20 million to 150 million in annual recurring revenue. And a lot of the businesses I talk to, they like that story because they're trying to do something similar with their agency. And so it was just, a, it was a very easy uh, thing for me to, um, to associate with and to focus on. The other thing is, um, while a lot of the principles that I teach when it comes to verticalizing apply directly to SaaS, SaaS businesses as well and B2B, other areas outside of agency, I didn't have enough, um, a, a tremendous amount of direct experience in helping those companies. And so as a result, I wanted to find a way for me to really build um, a lot of value for my clients. And that's, that's in part through leaning on my, my personal and professional experience in the agency space over the last 15 years. So if you look at the landscape overall with freelance right now, I think more than ever, people are starting, especially in marketing, opting mm -hmm. to at least do this on the side, if not doing it full time. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, what, what are some of those reasons you think that more of the top marketers are choosing to do freelance work over fully in-house or, or at least doing it on the side? 
Well, honestly, I can't speak for everybody, but I can tell you the reason why I decided not to go back in house. So I left the company as a, after a big, uh, a big win from a, you know, the revenue sort of growth perspective, I had plenty of options to go back in house. And the reason why I didn't do that is because I really valued, uh, my time. And one of the ways that, um, I, I felt that I could continue to contribute and, uh, add value, uh, to, to, to clients as well as, you know, live a sort of a, um, a good life from a, from a revenue and income perspective um, uh, that I could that I could have a great career and also have some of the the time freedoms that I was really um, looking for in in my life. I think also I'd been helping other entrepreneurs pursue their dreams for a long time uh, as an employee, and it was ready for myself to do the same. I, I, I felt like I had enough. Um, experience in the in the sort of the workspace and had a lot of good results that it was time for me to actually start investing directly in myself. Last question here: We mm. on this show we like we like Martech a lot, so I want to I just want to get your tool belt. What are the tools sure. you can't live without in marketing? So I'm a big HubSpot fan. We were very early at Scorpion there, where they were using their CRM, and we we broke it a thousand times um, just because we were used so heavily. So I'm a big fan of uh, of HubSpot. I'm also on Kajabi which is a platform that's really good for uh, if you sell courses and content, that's a great platform for that. They have email and other things. Those are my two big sort of uh, tools. I'm also on Riverside for my, uh, my podcast. And um, yeah, those are, the, those are the big sort of ones that I use on an ongoing basis. Awesome. Any, any parting words, advice, where we can find you? Anything's fair game here as we finish out. Awesome. Well, I... Uh, first off, I appreciate Blake the opportunity to be here and to share with your audience all these all these ideas and concepts. Um, if you are an agency owner, even a SaaS or a B two B that's interested in taking a vertical market approach, uh, I would love it to love to invite you to join my newsletter, which is a daily five days a week newsletter where I talk about some of the principles and concepts about applying these this vertical market approach to your business. You can find my um, my newsletter on my website. It's coreyquinn.com slash newsletter and it's c-o-r-e-y-q-u-i-n-n.com slash newsletter. We'd love to see you there and I'm also on LinkedIn so feel free to reach out anytime.